Nah, what what year y'all want me to start with? What year? What year I want me to start with, bro? Oh man, I'm so surprised. I'm so surprised that it's 2017. I'm so fucking surprised. All right, look. All right, look, because I know people are gonna try to clip this up, and I'm not gonna be politically correct with this because I, I'm I'm not trying to be. I'll I'll save that for for a safe space for another for another time. But look, you want me to start in 2017? All right, bet. So we just coming up our championship, and when we won the championship, it was it, it was the, one of the biggest changes in my life um, because. Man, like so many doors opened up after that finals. And let me just explain to you what happened after the championship. First off, I had never been in that type of killer mode in my life. I had never been in that type of killer mode in my life. I played some incredible games, but I, w I was just, I was in a killer, killer, killer mode, bro. Killer mode. Assassin mode, bro. It, assassin mode right so like I said after the finals doors started opening up um you know my life started to change I, I, I just started to do different things meaning you know I, I just wanted to try to be uh <laughs> let me let me see so I don't want to just chat with y'all let's just say this as I say my life changed and doors opened up When I came into the next season, our expectations were to do it again. And my focus level that next year was at an all-time high. All-time high. If you look at it, that season that I had the year after the championship, go, what, what's my stats? What's my stats? <laughs> what's my stats? What's my stats? What was my stats? Okay. What what did I leave out of there award wise with after that season? Huh? What did I leave with? Okay. What else? What type of what what type of award did I leave out of there with? Hmm? Hmm? No, what? Tell me. Tell me. Nah, nah. Go look at it. Go look at. Go look. Go look at it. Nothing, right? Nothing. 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 So. That whole season, man, I'm thinking I'm having one of the best years of uh, of my career. And what ended up happening was we got to the finals again, and what happened? Who who did the Warriors have? Who did the Warriors have? <laughs> who? Who did the Warriors have? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and what, what were y'all calling him? Again, huh? What were y'all trying to call him? Yeah, y'all were trying to say all this stuff about Katie, all this stuff. Oh, he, who, why, why would he do that? Look, look you had people really convinced, convincing y'all that Katie ruined the game. See, that's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> yeah, y'all really had people out here. Oh my gosh, this is, this is by far, this is by far, you know. This is by far one of the worst moves I've ever seen. And I'm not saying one person said it because it was like a resounding media thing. Who the Warriors have, right? Who do we have? Who do we have on our team? Come on. Who do we have? Hmm? We had a great team. We had a similar team, right, from the year before. But when you add KD to an already great team, it's just going to be a historical, it's going to be a historical, 
matchup. And and honestly, when you when you think about it, what were we down? We were down 3-0. We were down 3-0. No no type of no type of uh, light at the end of the tunnel. I'm, and I'm trying to multitask and shit like that, so I apologize, y'all. That's off. Y'all keep asking me these questions to explain this to you. Give me give me a second, man. I'm gonna try to uh, talk and play at the same time, but I, it, it's hard for me. Uh, but we're going against the Warriors, bro, with KD. That that is a a matchup that I don't know how many teams would be in that team, bro. Clay, Steph, Draymond, KD. Who else did they have on that team? Did they have JaVale on that team? Yes, they had JaVale. They had they had a mob, bro. Andre Godala. They had a mob. And I'm not saying we didn't have a mob at all. I'm not saying we didn't have a mob, bro. I'm not. But we were supposed to we were supposed to lose that series 4-0. And what ended up happening? What ended up happening in game four? At Cleveland. Huh? Tell me. What happened game four at Cleveland? Oh, okay, okay. We 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 still got four one, but what happened? Uh, at, at least, at least, at least we gave it an attempt. At least most most people would have folded four zero in the finals, right? And then what would, what would motherfuckers been saying about Bron's legacy after that, or my legacy after that? Hmm? Tell me, tell me, what would people been saying after that, bro? This is the biggest hit to his legacy. I can't believe that, you know, they didn't win one game and yada, 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 and this and that and this and that. But honestly, what really mattered? At least, at least just getting one game, right? Because we're going against a team that, we're going against a team that, for the most part, has every position filled where we're going against a juggernaut. We're going against a juggernaut of a team, right? So we win that game. We go back to Golden State. They they end up drubbing us again. You know, it, it was it was a tough it was a tough tough series, right? Tough series. I'm mad delusional. Of course, I'm delusional, right? I, I've just been playing this game for longer than um, ma majority of the people in the chat. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm delusional. Now that, now I'm about to get off this, I'm about to get off, um, the court. I appreciate y'all. So, what was I saying now? So, 2017, we end up going to the finals. We lose 4-1. We go into the summertime. You know what I mean? For me, I made a decision that I was just going to take my time, get some rest, enjoy the summer, really think about what my future holds and there's more to this story but I'm gonna give you out of the simpler version going to summer and I'm like look man I honestly think I, I need something new I, I'm appreciative of, of winning a championship here uh, I'm one and two in the finals with uh, with Cleveland you know what I mean? I definitely don't want to leave Bron or Shump or JR or K-Love or T-Top because I feel like we can go at this thing at least two more years, right? So it was a tough decision. And I didn't expect for all of what happened to take place because let me tell you what I got myself into. I ended up going on first take uh, after I asked for a trade, which was, at, in my opinion, at at this point, when I could look back on it and reflect, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have gone on first take, bro, because it was a setup. It was a setup. I called them, and I said, I called them, by the way. I called them. I called first take. <laughs> I called first take myself. It was like, yo, I'm coming on. They didn't call me. I called them. It, when I look back on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again. So I got on there and that's when I realized that it was just, it was more than just about the business or the game of basketball. It was about pinning two kings 
right against each other to make it seem like we hated one another to the point where I didn't I I I had to leave or I, I wanted to leave because of some unknown reason that everybody was wondering like was it was it this what was it Braun was it Cleveland was it this was it that no I was like nah bro it was me I I wanted something new that was on me and what ended up happening after that was after I got off first take it didn't make anything better it just made speculation happen more so when all the speculation happened more everybody asking questions that's when they started doing weird shit when I say they I mean the media they started asking people around me what's going on they started asking people you know what does Kyrie think about this and people started snitching bro it was weak it was weak as fuck he's trying to pin me against Bron this whole entire time like oh man Kai hates Bron Bron hates Kai it was never like that it was never like that I repeat it was never like that so I go back um I go back home uh to Jersey and I and I just need some time to think and um I get a call uh and they're like look you you about to film Uncle Drew soon so you got to pack your shit up and you you about to be in Atlanta for 2 weeks I mean for 2 months I filmed Uncle Drew that whole summer. I asked when I asked for my trade, I'm asking my agent what's going on day to day, day to day, day to day, day to day. Like, yo, what's happening? What's happening? What teams are calling? Now, now, a few teams called. I'm not gonna throw any teams under the bus because I respect the shit out of a lot of organizations. So I'm not gonna throw any team under the bus. But Boston called, and um, you know they were like, hey, you know we're interested, yada yada yada. So I'm like, all right, cool. We could do this. Mind you, what did Boston finish in the rankings or in the uh, in the standings that year after we lost in the finals? They finished. Okay. Does anybody remember that series? Does anybody remember that series? Okay, Do, does anybody remember my series against Boston before I got to Boston? Okay, all right. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So Boston calls me like, "Yo, we, uh, we, we we're making moves." I said, "Bet." We draft JT, J Tatum. If you don't know who JT is, we got Jalen Brown on the team. We got Marcus on the team. We we got Al Horford on the team. We we draft Daniel Tice. Um, so we got a young group. We got other guys on the team. We had Shimmy Ojale. We we had all these guys, and those are all my brothers, by the way. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna throw anything but positivity and light those guys' way. But dealing with the business side and seeing what had to happen behind the scenes for me to get traded, that was crazy. I did not expect five players to get traded for me. I did not expect um, all of this. Uh, extra hoopla to come out of it, man. I was just expecting for you know me to get traded, go to Boston, have a great time, sign a max deal, stay in Boston for at least 10 years, and retire. Because I was like, man, let, yo, this this opportunity I can't throw it off the table. This means a lifetime to me. My mom and my dad met in Boston. I grew up going to Boston University camps. I, I grew up. You know what I mean? A, a Celtics fan uh, just from afar. And, you know, it was just like a match made in heaven. So when I got there, man, I was so hyped. I was so ready for a fresh start. I was I was just like, man, look, we're, we, they finished first last year. We just went against them. Brad Stevens is the head coach. I feel like I, there's nothing that could go wrong here. So 2017, get traded, film Uncle Drew that whole summer, get traded to Boston. Bam, the season starts. What happened the first 15, 16 games in Boston, bro? I don't have to cap about me being... <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I don't have to cap in my story, bro. This is my life story. I don't have to I don't have to cap. I don't have to fucking cap about my life story. That's what I'm saying. Y'all not fucking getting it. I don't have to cap to y'all. What happened? Gordon Hayward goes down with one of the worst injuries we have ever seen. He went down with one of the worst injuries we have ever seen. You feel me? 
I'm not gonna respond. I'm not gonna respond to the hits. I got y'all, bro. One of the worst injuries, man. I I like I literally saw it happen live, it, and I had to say prayers right after that because I think we all felt the air be sucked out of the arena when that happened. It was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. So, boom, that happens game one. We lose Gordon. We we spent all the preseason playing together. We spent all the preseason getting to know one another. Bam, Gordon goes down. Bam, okay, cool. Now who steps up in that? JT, right? We all knew JT was nice at Duke, but did we expect JT to be that nice his rookie year? Yes, I did. <laughs> I knew he was nice. I, I knew it. I, I knew JB was nice. And when I say JT and JB, I'm talking about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I knew they were nice. Did I know Marcus Smart was as great as he is now, like a potential defensive player? Here? Absolutely, bro. I saw it every day in practice. I knew how great these guys were and still are to this day. So, Ben, we go through the season. We go on a, what, a 16-game win streak, 15-game win streak. I don't even remember what it is. Everybody was writing us off. We lost our first three games. Oh, my gosh, what's going on with the Celtics? Yada, yada, yada. Right, all right, so fast forward. We go through the 15-game win streak. We end up going, like, um, we end up going, uh, like, we end up splitting the rest of the games the rest of that season. Around game 60, my knee started acting up. And when my knee started acting up, I had to go back to Cleveland where I got my original surgery to get two screws taken out of my knee. I don't know if anybody in this chat has ever, I don't think it is, I don't think anyone's ever, if you've ever got knee surgery and you have screws put in your knee, you can understand what I'm saying. But if you have not, I'm going to do my best job to uh, explain it to you. I had two screws in my knee with wires tying on, in my kneecap. I got that done in 2015 after I went down in the first finals. So fast forward 2018, my knee starts acting up. They take out the wiring. They take out the wiring in my kneecap. And they test it for an infection. They take out the wiring, it comes back positive for an infection. I now have to get a pick line going from my bicep all the way to my heart to take antibiotics. <laughs> I had to, I had a pick line and I still have the scar to this day going straight from my bicep all the way to my heart. It was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever dealt with. It was one of the most embarrassing things because my daughter's asking me, what is that in my arm? People are asking me, like, why are you not going outside? Why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? So not only did I have an infection in my knee, but they had to take out the two screws. And I was left with two holes in my kneecaps that I eventually had to fill. But just that traumatic experience alone kept me out of the playoffs. I was, going, I was supposed to be back in those playoffs. I was supposed to be back in those playoffs in 2019. When it, when we made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, I was supposed to be back. But because I had an infection in my knee, I couldn't come back. So now they had to take the screws out. And, and this is the, and by the way, these are the details the media would never, never, never tell y'all. Ever. Because it's all about performance, performance, performance. Oh my gosh, you didn't show up. Oh my gosh, you let your team down. Oh my gosh, you 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 sold on us. Oh my gosh, you let us down. Oh my gosh. And it's like literally I dealt with one of the most traumatic experiences in my life dealing with that knee injury. So bomb. I don't need no sympathy from anybody. I don't. I'm over it at this point. I got through it. But fast forward that summer, I'm coming off knee surgery. I have I have muscle atrophy on my left leg, my quad looks like a small chicken wing bro i have no bounce i have no athleticism i'm slow as shit i'm sitting in bed and i'm just frustrated what led what led uh excuse me what happened after that after i'm sitting at home and i'm dealing with knee surgery i don't know if you've ever been injured if anybody's ever been injured right <laughs> if anybody's ever been injured when you can't walk or you can't do the normal things that you want in life Bro, that leads to depression, bro. Yeah, that leads to depression. That leads to mental health issues. Because when your body and your mind are not in alignment, it leads to different issues. It leads to different things that you have to deal with. So 
I had to deal with internal stuff. So coming into 2019, I'm already feeling like I'm myself, but I'm only a, a, a shell of myself. I'm, I, I, I am not really expressing how I'm truly feeling. So 2019 hits, right? Or 2018-19 season hits. We come back. We're, we're predict, predicted to win the NBA championship. We're predicted to go far in the finals. We're, we're predicted to, you know what I mean, like win the whole thing. Like everybody's picking us number one, number one, number one. We have, uh, I forgot about my boy T-Row too, Scary Terry. I forgot my boy. Like we, we had Marcus Morris. We had um, Aaron Baines. We, we had, um, I don't want to forget anybody either. We, we had Shane Larkin uh, on the year before. But and then we got, um, uh, what's my boy's name? Um, I don't want to forget anybody's name. I don't want to forget anybody's name. Uh, what's my boy's name? It's slipping my head. Um, but we had every position that was filled, man. It was supposed to be great. So, boom. I go to um, management in Boston, and I'm like this. This is maybe a week into preseason. I'm like, yo, I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm coming back. That's what I said. I, I told Boston, I'm like, I'm coming back. And the reason why I said I'm coming back is because I had plans up my sleeve, y'all. When I tell you I had plans up my sleeve, I had plans up my sleeve. I'm not going to tell y'all who I had in mind or what trade was going to happen because that will lead to speculation. But I, I had plans up my motherfucking sleeve. I was like, bro, I'm coming back coming back to Boston if y'all have me I made sure it's like if y'all have me I'm coming back so I'm hyped I say it in front of the Boston crowd I say it in front of everybody I tell my teammates right I'm like I'm coming back I'm, I'm signing this deal and I only said it at that time because I was sure I was certain I was happy I'm like yo this is about to be the greatest day of my life after this season is done I'm about to sign whatever the, the shit is right right you know what I mean it's not so much about the money per se uh, I want to make sure my family's taken care of but I was literally happy being able to get that off my chest so I didn't have to answer any free agency questions right and a week later after I, I I'm, I'm living out a dream you know what I'm saying I'm I'm happy as ever a week later my grandfather passes he transitions my grandfather transitions and it's one of the hardest bit of news I could take in my life because you know that that man definitely inspired me beyond um, words you know what I mean like like he really he really impacted my life in, in very positive ways and um you know it's still hard for me to even talk about but my grandfather passing after that i felt like i was letting a lot of my family members down because i was spending a, a lot more time dedicating myself to being great in the game but i wasn't spending enough time being a great family member and probably some of y'all don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. And this message will go over your head. And you know what I mean? This shit will end up going viral tomorrow, right? But honestly, it was never just about Boston. It was never about, um, you know what I mean? Like trying to make sense of a decision I made a week prior to that. All I could do is be there for my family. And... Like, like again, I don't, I don't really need sympathy, y'all. I appreciate the support, but I had to get through it. And um, when I, uh, yeah, when I uh, had to deal with that, I don't know if anybody's ever had to deal with losing a loved one, um, but you go through different stages of grief. And guess what I had to go through. Guess what I had to go through uh, in front of the in front of the public eye, me grieving. So I'm angry, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm depressed. Uh, I'm over here dealing with real life grief. I, I cried, you know, about me about losing my grandfather, bro. And you, don't, 
like you you control and hate all you want but it's just real shit that goes on in life where because i'm in the public eye I'm, i can't escape having human emotions like somehow y'all motherfuckers think that we robots out here and that we we don't feel feelings like and we don't go through real life circumstances but we still have to go out and perform so my grandfather transitions and then after that we go out on a west coast trip and um i go to his memorial and i end up playing a game that next day and when i tell you that for the rest of the season i wasn't really myself i i definitely wasn't and i wasn't having fun playing basketball as much anymore and and that started to spill over into our team goals you know what i mean and and i'm definitely definitely not ever a person that comes in and says look at me look at me and what's going on i'm just real and when i look back on it would i have done things differently absolutely would i have done things differently absolutely did i have to learn from my mistakes in the public eye absolutely that I have to deal with the consequences of going throughout the season and then making the decision to go back home and be with my family? Absolutely. But let me tell you about the positives. Let me tell you about the positives what ended up happening. I learned how to cope with grief. I learned how to cope with myself going through depression i learned how to go seek out help from family members i learned how to make connections stronger i learned how to admit to being wrong in situations where you know you feel justified to be right but really you just got to move on in life you know you just got to put one step in front of the other that those those are some of the positives and the other positives are i really learned more about myself and and what makes me motivated every day to get up because if if any of y'all know anybody that's dealt with losing a loved one, you can deal with suicidal thoughts. You feel me? You can you can deal with suicidal thoughts. And that's that's just one of the things of grief. Like you don't want to live here anymore on this earth. And that's the realness of life. You feel me that nobody wants to talk about. <clears throat> And it's not, it don't, don't, and by the way, don't come at, don't come at the fan base either. Don't come at their fan base. It's all good. Let, let, let that, let that rock. You know what I mean? Um, cause I'll get that in a minute. But throughout that season, 2018, 2019, I'm dealing with all this. We end up going into the first round against the Pacers. Um, and we go into the second round against the, against the Bucks. And it was just a, it was just a different level, bro. It was a different level of physicality. It was a different level of focus. And us as a team, we were still really young. We were only in our second year together. If if we all stayed together for five, six, seven years, then I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, who who knows? Y'all can speculate what would have happened, but that didn't. You know what I mean? We we had two sm small years together, and I'm and I'm judged based on two years of being with a team, and then leaving that team to go to my hometown to play. And all of the speculation, all the shit that gets thrown uh, on my name, I feel like, again, people just hide their hand all the time. So I had to learn a lot once I left um, that point in my career. Being in Boston taught me a lot. Um, I definitely dealt with a lot of, uh, shall I say, overt and over-the-top racism even being a player in Boston. I'm not saying that Boston's racist. Don't ever fucking quote me in saying that shit. All I'm saying is that the reality of the situation is I dealt with a lot of shit that I never talked about because if I wasn't performing up to their standards or expectations, let's just say words were flying everywhere. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, the way that they were treating other teams and not just in basketball, but in other sports and other entertainment venues it got to be too much and and i couldn't i couldn't defend that you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna say that it it was it, i'm not gonna say that it was comfortable for me bro because it really wasn't 
it was very uncomfortable for me. So towards the end of the season, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then, um, you know, I had to make a move to go back home and be with my family. And that's what it is. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't have to say and repeat some of these things. I don't. Because all of this that I'm talking about is really my perspective. Other people may have a different perspective, right? But if you weren't in our locker room and if you weren't in our day-to-day, you really don't know what the fuck was going on. You really don't. (laughs) You really don't. If you weren't there every day, if you weren't in our practices, if you weren't in our team meetings, you really don't know what the fuck going on. So when I'm telling you my perspective, you don't have to respect it. You don't have to agree with it. You can criticize it. You can judge it. But this is my perspective, and this is what it is. So going from Cleveland, I told you all from 2017, getting traded to Boston, going from Boston and being a free agent, my <laughs> my journey, it, <laughs> let's just say injuries, losing loved ones it it shifted me into a whole different um path you know what i'm saying like i didn't expect my grandfather to pass during the year where i i've i've committed to boston for five plus years and then i lose him and then i go through some of the worst mental health crises in my life you know what i mean i'm I'm dealing with real life issues because i didn't know how to deal with grief being in cleveland being injured you know what I mean? Being with one of the greatest to ever play the game and wanting respect from my peers and wanting to go out and start something new. I didn't know it was going to come with all that, bro. But it did. But it did. And it only got me stronger. It only got me stronger. It only made me stronger, bro. That's what I'm trying to share with y'all. Like, let all the people talk and do that. But their journeys are not a reflection of anything close to what I've been through. And I don't say that as if we're not living a similar, you know what I mean, a life that is normal. But I'm dealing with this on a public stage. You feel me? I'm dealing with this in the in the public eye. That's like one of the weirdest things. I'm doing this shit in public. So if you waking up every day and, and people are like studying your life and observing your life in the way where it's just like, bro, I'm, I'm human. Like, I'm going through shit right now. It's like, you know what I mean? I hope y'all can understand. It's like, nah, we don't understand. Nah, fuck that. You, you're supposed to still be, you know what I mean? Nah, fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm like, bro, chill. Chill. Chill out. Chill out, bro. Chill out. So the last five years for me have been like dealing with what is preparing me for the next few chapters of my life because the next five years, I guarantee they won't be like these, the the last five years. You can have all the, the, oh, Kai, you got a second round exit in the playoffs, man. Uh, You got swept by Boston this year, man. You, uh, you, you, you're not, you're not who you once was, man. You're not, you're not this, like I'm. Keep that same energy, bro. You you make it greater for redemption to happen. Y'all make it greater, bro. And then on top of that, all the supporters and love that I get outweighs and outshines all of the negativity. I promise you. So when I address the negativity, y'all, I have to because I'm being funny. I troll that shit. All right, it's funny to me. It's just the airy speaking to me. Right? It's the airy speaking to me, bro. It's the Aries speaking to me. So, y'all gotta let me talk my ish sometimes, but to all the people that love and support and get inspiration, not only from me, but from other great individuals, I'm I'm, I'm with y'all. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm grateful that I could do this in public because I'm just showing y'all that they throw a whole bunch of shit and try to hide their hand. So whenever you get successful or whenever you're on some type of trajectory towards greatness, people are always gonna be part of that demise. You know what I mean? Always try to break your foundation, but the but paying attention to the people that genuinely love and support you really gets you through. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't I don't walk around alone ever. I don't ever feel alone ever. And I, I felt most alone when I was dealing with some of the things I was dealing with in the last five years. 
You know what I mean? I felt like, damn, who can I really turn to? And when I found that, that system, bam, I end up in Brooklyn. Me and Kay get together. We rocking out. We mobbing out. We go to Brooklyn. We shake the whole world up. We're like, yo, fuck this. It's, it's me and you. You know what I mean? We doing this shit together. Um, but even in that sense, like, me and him had to grow uh, in, in, a, in a most beautiful way because, like, you, you look at his journey, you look at my journey, Man, like, I, I don't remember dealing with as much shit as I dealt with in, like, 2013-14. What? <laughs> bro, what? What are y'all spamming in here, bro? <laughs> Yo, bro, chill, bro. Stop talking down on people's names, bro, in the chat, bro. Y'all gotta chill. I'm be honest with you, I don't feel the same way some of y'all feel about teams, players. When y'all be saying all that disrespectful shit, bro, y'all can miss me with that. I don't, I don't go behind people's, I don't go behind people's backs and be like, yo, oh man, that, that guy fucking sucks. Nah, bro, I don't do that. I don't go on social and be like, nah, that guy fucking sucks. Nah, bro, I don't do that. I'm getting too disrespectful on, on people's sacrifice and hard work and what they do to grind. And, and we need more appreciation and giving flowers to to people that that show up, you know, on, on whether it be the highest pressure situations, bro. 